Greetings. Hello, Hello everybody. How's it going? Good afternoon. How's the internet this afternoon? Hope y'all are doing well. Sunny. We are Invoke. And we'll just go around and say our names. I'm Nick. I'm Zach. <laughs> I'm Jeff. I'm Carl. And we are super happy to be here on KMFA Sound Ideas today. We're going to be doing a quick little workshop in some improvisational techniques and some collaborative songwriting things that ideally you can either do at home, you can uh, do with your friends over the internet, which is what we're going to do right now, uh, and you can... Um, you know, you can have fun with them in any variety, safe, safely, socially distanced in, uh, in any way that you feel. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off with some, uh, some games. This is, these are games that are inspired by our composer friend by the name of Danny Clay. And uh, he's, he's a super great composer. And maybe, Zach, you can talk a little bit more about him as we get into it. But these are going to be some improvisational uh songwriting games so take it away zach I'm just gonna write it up on the whiteboard here hopefully you guys are all yes. seeing this look at this look at this technology here <laughs> i know i'm going That's out good. out of screen really se one second let me grab this and let me the beard's looking great it's coming in nice if i can get it no nope. beard is still in, in screen it's yeah. still on screen, screen. All yeah, right, cool. so th uh, that's all that really matters. We don't need to see your eyes, mm. just the beard. It's fine. Oh, nice. Hmm. It's hey. like uh, you know those those witness videos with the with the garbled vid you know voice, so they can see your eyes and they know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we kind of worked with Danny Clay about a couple years ago, 2017, I think. We were at uh, Stanford. Uh, pre-collegiate program in California and we brought Danny in to work with uh, some students we were working with on the collaborative compositions that they were doing and we found that his tools with musical games really opened up everybody's minds to um, creating something that had a structure but felt really easy and not intimidating if you didn't know exactly how to play an instrument so we're just going to do a couple or I'm going to introduce a couple of these tools and then we're going to get to to working on them um, we'll do some demonstrations amongst ourselves, and then hopefully you guys are following along at home, and uh, we'll be doing some with you, your friends, and your family. So, first uh, game is a pretty universally known one. It's called Mirror, and it's really simple. Actors use it a lot. Um, but I'm going to ask Jeff to demonstrate a visual mirror. So... I'm just going to start moving and he's going to just mirror exactly what he sees um, and then maybe interpret it differently, but just mirror my, mirror my emotions, Jeff. <laughs> I'm in a chair. Okay, nice. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna twist it up a little bit. So that's mirror on a visual to visual basis. Now we're gonna switch it up. We're gonna do audio or like sound to sound. So Nick, if you want to imitate, happy to do sounds. it. And maybe you, with maybe, with instruments first. Yeah. All right. So this is just violin to violin. do I'm going to change it up maybe you stay on the violin and I'm going to use a different thing and you're going to um, imitate it as best you can awesome. um, so dramatic effect I got my power drill here let's go
Cool. So that's something completely different. Obviously, this is a power drill. Um, if you're going to use this at home, kids, make sure you have parents' supervision for sure. Um, <laughs> But you can use this and try to imitate it with different things. So now, um, for the final example of mirror, I'm going to ask Carl to help me out here. I'm going to do some visual stuff, kind of like what a conductor is doing, and he's going to imitate using sound. And he can use his viola, he can use mandolin, or whatever he wants to do. So I'm just going to go ahead with it. So here we go. <laughs> Great. So that's mirror. the second game we're going to play is called Build. And the concept is really simple. We're just going to be building a chord or a sound or some kind of thing like that. And we're going to do it us four. So I'm going to start with uh, myself. Jeff's going to add in another sound. Nick's going to add in a sound. And then Carl's going to add in a sound. So let me get another little something, something here and figure out what I'm going to be doing. So, all right. This is called build. I'm just going to start. So here we go. Okay, that's a build. Let's do something maybe a little bit more sonorous, guys. Let's do like a... <laughs> hey, you, uh, you chose that one, man. Yeah, that's my bad. My bad. Without any structure, you never know what to expect. So let's do... This is just going to be... I'm just going to build a chord, um, and then we can... We'll see what happens with it. We should have started with that. <laughs> So that's a that's like a simple chord. We just built it. Everyone was just paying attention to what the other person did. So you don't really have to like know if it's like a, a G chord or a C chord or anything like that. You can just make whatever sound you want. All right. Now with build, we're gonna add another element to it. We're gonna define what the build is going to be. And um, I was actually gifted this little toy box by uh, by Danny Clay himself a couple years ago and in it he has a, a pair that has a dice with um, descriptive words on it so I'm just gonna um, roll this dice and we're gonna see what comes out and I'm gonna say what the word is and then we're going to try to build a sound that imitates that word all right here we go so I'm rolling the dice and the dice says senses all right let's see what happens when invoke plays a chord that is about your senses. Built. Very I simple. It. It. <laughs> While we're doing this, by the way, guys, I would like you guys virtually to maybe in the comments put some descriptive words that you think are really cool. It, they can be scenes like waterfall or desert oasis, or it can be like an emotion, like really happy or really, really sad or something like that, or colors, purple, blue, blue, green. Um, we can get as abstract as we want. Just start sending them our way, and we're going to get to them in a little bit. But I just thought I would get those cooking. And then the final game we're going to play right now is called Trigger. And not like a trigger that's traumatic or anything like that. We're going to be um, 
using this to help create a structure for our musical soundscape that we're going to be creating in a bit. Trigger is really simple. It's just an event that you predetermine that signals uh, moving on to another event. So we can use this with build. We can have, I'm going to just make a new whiteboard here. I'm going to make a basic structure using a trigger. So let's say we want to start a piece. We're going to need a trigger to start the piece. We're going to go into a build and then another trigger is going to happen and we could do another build and another trigger and that would end the piece. So that's a very simple structure that we're going to use to doing it. Build uh, Triggers can be anything. They can be a clap. They can be a yell whoo, or stop or go or whenever I play this figure on the violin, that could be a trigger. It's just a thing that happens very quickly and succinctly to show that we're gonna move on to the next thing. So with that in mind, we're gonna now create our first musical struck game. Let me just do another one. So, or first soundscape, I should say. And have people been commenting yet or no? I can't. We have one. Okay. Thanks, Todd. Yeah, and so Thanks, what Todd. what are, did we did we say why we wanted them to why we wanted them to comment build ideas? Yeah, so right now if you guys are going to be throwing in build ideas or descriptive words or um, things like that, we're going to use them right now. Um, to create a couple different soundscapes for you guys as demonstrations of what you can do at home. So, um, we just got one word, ecstatic. Anybody else comment? Not just yet. Okay, so let's, the word is, I'm about to spell this wrong. It's spelled in the chat, man. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> That's like whenever I ask a question of someone and they're like, you know, you could just Google that. And I'm like, but I just kind of wanted to ask you. Yeah. Oh, that's that's <laughs> fair. Is that ecstatic, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Ooh, we got some good ones. Blooming hibiscus. Man. We got grape or... Gre okay, well, it's one at a time. <laughs> we got some good ones, though. Nick, you We got some great ones. <laughs> All right, so ecstatic... Do you want to do one more word? Yeah. Or let's sure. combine. I, let's combine the the purple bear. Yes. It's a great purple, purple bear, bear with a top hat and a monocle. A great that, purple bear. That also is ecstatic. Yes. Oh, oh so that's one thing. Where, yeah. And Jeff, let's have you lead off what this is going to be, and just tell me what we're going to do, and how we're going to build this um, um, soundscape for our lovely live audience with a top hat, right? Yeah, they can top spell. Hat. Good job. <laughs> Good job, us. Yes. All right, I, I keep on forgetting to bring this closer to me when I'm speaking. Um, so, so we have to start with a trigger of some sort, right? So definitely starting with a trigger. Um, by the way, for people at home, the way I'm coming up with this is sort of random, um, and that's kind of how you develop the skill is just try things. Um, so definitely start with the trigger and that will be when I start playing um, and it'll be Arco. So when I start playing, that's the trigger. First thing we're gonna do is a is a build that's quick and well, ecstatic is, is the word. So let's use that as our build word. Um, let's go in reverse score order with with Zach as proverbial first violin, meaning me, Carl, Nick, Zach. Okay. Um, so we're going to go in order, reverse order. So you're going to go Jeff, then Carl's going to join, then Nick's going to join, and then I will finish that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to have a structure to the order of the build, let's make, let's make that one pretty quick. Um, and then the next trigger is when I switch to pizzicato. And then um, let's have everybody mirror me on our stroll through the wilderness. Um, because 
the the great purple bear is obviously strolling through the wilderness in his most ec definitely. ecstaticism ecstatic <laughs> never mind <laughs> okay no it's a build to... but it's a mirror come on and build mirror and i got that and oh yeah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then the next trigger let's say is i'm gonna um let's just end on that one that's pretty that's a pretty sizable one right do yeah I do a trigger to end yeah i will i will thonk my water bottle <laughs> okay thonk is the trigger i like it thonk there you go <laughs> <Thonk. It's good. laughs> <That's... laughs> oh man okay so right now we're going to be demonstrating our soundscape number one an ecstatic purple bear with top hat and monocle scrolls in the forest <laughs> uh so, the magnum opus take it away All right, let's do commissioned it. by kmfa <laughs> say uh, yeah it, it, you know <laughs> maybe i should use one that doesn't have like a rubber stopper at the bottom <laughs> dampening all the vibes all right well, that was cool i think we represented an ecstatic purple bear very well I uh, about, thanks i don't know I what really like... thinks but i think I we really did a great like... job we got uh, some rock on signs from chris thanks chris thanks chris i, I really like the the first build we had a really it had like a very paul wianco lift vibe to it Oh yeah, was, the beginning of lift. Nice. I, I almost forgot how that piece started. Kind of ecstatically, I think is actually the word. Yeah. That... All right, so now we're going to do another one, and Carl is going to be our um, soundscape leader. You know, I'm having trouble seeing the chat words. Just, uh, do we have some new ones up that someone can throw at me? Blooming hibiscus. Mm. Ooh. That's going to be real dark. Why? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Who's, got it? who's who's our edge lord? Who's got the darkest personality? I mean, obviously Zach. <laughs> obviously Zach. Okay, I like blooming hibiscus. Let's roll okay. with that. That's kind of cool. All right, so for yeah. Ah. Let's do Blooming Hibiscus Grows a Beard. <laughs> that, are, so psychedelics? That no, it's just, just a flower growing a beard, my man. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's just normal. <laughs> just so normal stuff. fine. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, and should we do this one with uh, no instruments or with- Yeah, uh, so I, I know yeah. that, I believe it was, was it, was it Graham that did the video where he was helping people create instruments at home? Graham Reynolds. I, yeah, I think so. It was Graham. Yeah, so so we we've also decided to home source some instruments as well. I have a um, I have two bottles, and they make I think it's a fifth. <laughs> this one's a little flat, but you know what you're gonna do. Um, let's it's see. What does everyone else have? Anyway. Um, I have I will... a jar, <laughs> which good. has a little. It's like one of the push button pops up jars, so it kind oh, of got a ring to it. It's like Snapple. That's nice. I guess I could shake. No, it's, it's yeah, like flowery. It's too there. fine. It's too fine. Yeah, it doesn't. But anyway, what do you have, Jeff? I have a book and that water bottle, the 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 thonkin water bottle. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And a and a plastic bag. 
perfect. And that's that's, oh, that's great. That's Courtesy of Target. ASMR video oh, for God. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so I have uh, I have my handy dandy black and decker lithium uh, power tool, and then I have my <laughs> since we're doing a, a, a real homemade beer, instrument. I have a, I have a, my beer trimmer. So this is going to be my two kind of percussion. Okay. So I got two sounds here. I, I think I what... got. I think I got it. You guys ready? I got yeah, this. Let's do it. Trigger is gonna be. Um, trigger is gonna be. I'm gonna whistle. Okay. Sorry, is that good chance, right? Um, yeah, first build. I have. I'm, I'm, I have a bit of a narrative here. I think. Okay. It's coming to me. All right. I'll whistle, and then we're gonna build. Uh, we're gonna build. Uh, Jeff, first. Nick. Zach, me. That build is uh, that build's just gonna be the hibiscus itself. It's blooming, so just the blooming hibiscus is that. Yeah, flower. Uh, and then trigger is gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna do this. So low bottle. Okay. Low bottle. Gotcha. This is gonna be the. Then we're gonna do a build. Uh, we're gonna do a build that's the sound of a beard growing. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> so, I don't know how that works, but well, something will happen. And that's um, where the artistic freedom comes in. Yeah. Uh, be, be... And then trigger, I shave my beard on, off on camera. <laughs> trigger, <it's>... oh no. <laughs> um, trigger will be. Uh, Let's, let's see. Trigger will be. I will. Um, I'm gonna drop a paperclip into one of these bottles and shake it around. Okay. Cool. Uh, then the next build is gonna be the hibiscus shaves off its beard. Okay. All okay. right. And the uh, the order there is gonna be uh, Zach, and we're all gonna mirror Zach. He's actually going to shave off his beard. Is this Zach like... Shave off no, I'm not going <laughs> to shave off my beard. Shave it. Shave it. No. Oh. oh, no. Um, that's going to be a mirror. And then the final trigger is going to be... Uh, let's see. Are these builds all in the same order? Well, sure. the, that one... Yeah, yeah sure. Mirror. Yeah. Except same for, order. obviously, mirrors that. Yeah. Uh, and then the last trigger is going to be... I'm going to start whistling again. Route. I like this. I don't know Maybe if this is actually okay. Cool. Let's see if I can get the... move the. I can scoot our. I'll scoot our faces over temporarily here. Sorry. Cool. No, it's great. It looks great. What a <laughs> piece. Right, should, should we try it out? Right. It's gonna be. Let's so let's do it. I'm, our I'm magnum sorry. opus. Good. Better shave, flower. I have flowers friends. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. Well done. Subversive art making, man. Oh, nice. Oh, no. So, uh, yeah, that paper clip really got lost in that big bottle there, I think. It's, uh. really, it's really in there. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So, should we, we have about another 10 to 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Should we do another quick one? Or yeah, why don't we do why don't we do one more and then like five minutes of if anybody has any questions or anything like that. Absolutely. Maybe let's do a little bit more of a hybrid of uh, tonality, <laughs> like at least one person on yeah. a, on a, on an instrument and then yeah, oh, that's a good idea. Up. Yeah, let's, let's do like two and two on instruments and homemade instruments and other and other instruments and real life instruments. I'll grab this guy. How about Nick? You uh, you tell us what what we're doing. Okay. Does any if anybody is in the chat and has some new ideas, shoot them out. But in the meantime, we'll just uh, we'll riff on one here. So soundscape number three. Uh, the trigger will be a snap pits. Mm. A good old snap pits. For those of you right. who haven't seen a snap pits before, it's where you take the take up the string and you kind of snap it against the fingerboard like this so that'll be the first trigger and what should we, what what's the uh what's the what's the soundscape here guys the overall Throughout. theme uh well we had you can we could do maybe like Wait, we could do we could do the word see. thonk the word thonk, okay. First build is thonk. Build on the theme of thonk. Variations on the theme of thonk. Yes. And actually, snap pizzas are quite thonk, thonk-esque. A car, car about to break oh, down. That's great. <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> so actually, I feel like thonk is a very... is. Yeah. That's about, that's about what you'd hear first. It's something <laughs> that your car is falling apart. Yeah. yeah. And the snap pits is probably... Probably uh, a bad sign as well. That's your yeah, brake okay. lines going. There your it goes. Lines. Okay. <laughs> so oh. the next, the next trigger will be scratch tone. Are you sure everyone yeah. how that works, Nick? Yeah. So scratch tone Kinda is cool. where you use too much pressure that it stops being a note and it just starts being a scratch. So like note, well something like that. So that will be scratch tone. And then let's do our next build being uh, pieces of your car falling out the bottom of your car. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> be sure to write that out in its entirety, Zach, so yeah. that you understand. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to do pieces <laughs> of your car. <laughs> and let's see. So the next trigger will be Coleno, which is this. And then let's do one more build, which is you, this, the sadness that your bank account now feels. <laughs> when you have to repair your when car. When you have to repair your car. I'm too scared to check my bank account. We should post that link. In case anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about. Brought to you, Todd. Soundscape brought to you by Volvo Austin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Volvo, if you want to sponsor us. Yeah, hey. And, and I won't KMFA. take a car. <laughs> All right. I don't think any of us have Volvos, but we would love we would love to have one. Okay, okay and the final, the final trigger will be... Uh... Um, what's a good one? Oh, face palm. <laughs> sure. This, okay, so Nick and Carl are on the on more traditional instruments, and Zach and I are messing around with what we yeah. got in the room. Okay, cool. Okay, um, let's do it. Thank you. 
That was pretty good. Yes. Oh, I love it. Right on. <laughs> I found this like tube of something. I don't know what's in there, but I really, I really felt Not like we cool. were in the mechanic shop at the end there. That was quite. Yeah. Oh, well, with the drill is perfect. <laughs> it's yeah. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and just the the murmuring. You know, that reminded me of the teachers in the Peanuts. It just gives you like yeah enough <laughs> information to understand what's going on. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we have like a couple of moments for questions or comments, more comments or anything else or requests. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in. This is super fun to do. This is a version of a workshop that we actually do uh, live. And this is our first time doing it not live, yeah. which is really fun. But, you know, it's a, it's a way to, to involve all types of different music making that doesn't necessarily have to be like trained music making, uh, which is super fun for us. You know, we've done this, uh, we've done the version of this workshop with, um, with students who have musical experience, some who don't have musical experience. So it's, uh, it's really fun to, to be able to do this in all different, <laughs> all different types of, uh, environments. Um, I just had a thought and if anybody's at home with their family or, you know, friends or want to do this online and record something and send it our way, we'll totally post it on our channels. Yeah. Oh yeah. That'd, that'd be, be awesome. awesome. That'd be really awesome. You kept them like under a minute, but like, you know, shared what the, the form was and everything like that. That'd be great. There's a, there's a thing we do with the, with the kids and the students, whenever we have them do this, where we don't have them tell the other groups of students what the theme or what the idea was for their builds. And then everyone tries to guess after hearing it. So if you want to post and not say what your build is, feel free and have people guess in the comments. It's also super fun. Are, are the construction workers contributing to our soundscape, Zach? Yes, if you heard, I'm in my bathroom right now because outside my window, they're putting on stucco and hammering all sorts of stuff. So. And they're finally trapping him in there, thank God. Well, so. they really fit in with the broken car motif, so. <laughs> Have we used this technique? Yeah. You know, actually, sort of, because when you're, if you think about it, what, what these games are are just sort of the bare roots of compositional technique, right? You have a way to start, you have a way to transition, you have a way to end, and you have ideas in between. So I think we haven't used this um, specifically more than finding it out through Danny and sort of realizing how applicable it is to like the way that we compose anyway. Um, it's sort of like stripping away the complicatedness of what composition is and just bringing it back to, you know, bare bones. Like this is the structure. These are the tools you use. So that's why it's super relatable for non-musicians or, or kids that don't have a lot of training yet. Um, it makes it all very relatable. Yeah. yeah we did a thing, uh, for, if you guys were watching sound ideas two weeks ago, I think, um, Steve Parker was on and he does the sound spaces in the Blanton and he asked us to write a, a piece about the human body somehow and so we kind of turned it on its head and we did a, a piece about the game operation which wasn't exactly like what we just did with the trigger build trigger but we did improvise um, the way we wrote those songs was that we improvised on a theme of the different uh, parts in operation so we had like the uh, bread basket we had the um, 
was it frozen the cone the funny bone the funny there's bone the yeah butterflies in the stomach so those were like the idea or those were the soundscape ideas and then we improvised a little song about a minute or two minutes long each and if you wanted to get meta the triggers there were the actual in game of people playing operation when they go for a certain item the trigger was that for us to start to play and then when they got it or when the timer now that's when we stopped and that was the trigger to end so that structure kind of fit too. So yeah, maybe that is that is a good example of when we use this. Yeah, it's a super fun way to tap in. Yeah, like you said, Jeffrey, it's a great way to tap into our creativity. It's a it's a fun game that you can play that just has no uh, has no real like um, end goal, but it just warms up the the creative uh, process and really gets you into that improvisatory type of mode. Yeah, and if you're really present while you're doing it, you, you can find so many little gems and ideas and like the things that you just, like even the things we just did, I heard some things that were happening. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So, <laughs> you know, if, if you're, even if you're a serious composer, you know, a professional composer, you could use something like this to get over writer's block, I'd imagine, or, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But definitely approach all of this with a sense of just abandon, throwing caution to the wind, because um, it is kind of a form of improv, and I know that that word is icky to some people. But you just gotta just like use a power drill and just make a rhythm with it, or just pick something and you know go for it. Doesn't really have to be good yet, and you can determine whether or not what you just did was good. Uh, after the fact, but the fact that you did it was what was important. Very true. Okay, MFA asks, when you don't do this, where else do you find your inspirations? It's a good question. Uh, kind of all over the place. I mean, we we actually do, I would say, a version of this when we're um, creating certain types of things, and that's how we, like, for example, our um, the Austin Chamber Music Center uh, asked us the past couple years to write film scores for them uh, for basically rescoring uh, classic at, or, you know, whichever film we chose. Last year we chose um, Fantastic Planet. It's a 70s animated film. And uh, we actually improvised in kind of this way while the, uh, while the movie was playing. And we used much of that in the final version of the score but you know and we just grabbed random things i think zach had a can of instant oats or something like that I was shaking it around and we had water glasses which we were bowing and zach was hitting and there was a vase or something and a lot of those things actually ended up in the final product so you know we use a version of this for a lot of different creative projects that we do Even yeah, quote unquote another, norm. Yeah, go for it. Well, I was in another way. I, way that I find inspiration is definitely through stories because I'm so so like you know I read a lot of sci-fi fantasy novels. I play D and D, and so I'm like really into the idea of like narrative and story. So especially with the the film scores in Fantastic Planet, having that kind of story to write off of was inspiring for me. I find that I'm usually better at co composing, better at creating when I have a story in my head about what I'm going for. So story is a big inspiration for me. So that actually, these these little builds are like tiny little stories, and I yeah. like you know they are like t they be almost become these tiny little narrative vignettes unintentionally. So that's something really cool about this. For sure, should should uh, should we call it? You think? Yeah. If no one else has any more questions. Any other questions? This yeah. was super awesome. Yeah. Huge thanks Thank to KMFA for asking us to, to do this and, uh, you know, for keeping us creative, even even when we're hunkered down at home. So uh, thank you all for watching. Oh, yeah. Uh, Carla says, tell us when you can, <laughs> when you can hear a concert. The answer is tomorrow night. We are, we are doing uh, 7 Central tomorrow night and every Friday night uh, for the foreseeable future. We're doing what we're calling Invoking Pieces, which is... The four of us performing little solo sets from our homes and uh, and having just a general hangout and 
uh, playing a little bit of music. And you might hear Zach, Zach's been reading some poetry, he's been some electronics, and all sorts of fun stuff. So that's tomorrow at uh, 7, and you can see it on our Facebook, or Twitch, or YouTube. Uh, and all our Invoke Sound. So if you use uh, twitch.tv slash Invoke Sound, youtube.com slash Invoke Sound, and facebook.com slash Invoke Sound, maybe? I think I so. Remember. I think so. Or it's either Invoke.sound, but just... Yeah, know. something like that. But, Google will point you to the right place. Exactly. And, yeah, you should be able to check that out tomorrow. That's at 7. And um, then, oh, Catalina says, why invoke? Mm. Zach, uh, you want to? Yeah. <laughs> That's a big thing. Sorry, my, the big Sorry for the banging. Uh, tried my I best. also, like, really I hammered the music oh, stand yeah. with my mic on it, so that might have been that. <laughs> Invoke, r- real quick before we go, Invoke, it, our name is uh, Invoke because of the Book of Toasts um, from 1904 by Mir- uh, Mira Andrew Thomas, I believe is the name. Um, and the first toast in the book is an invocation. And uh, it was something that we like to say um, at uh, gatherings and when we were hanging out. And uh, we were looking for a name that um, grandma um, would be proud of, as well as um, not necessarily needing a string quartet attached to the end. So invoke is what we came up with. And um, definitely, um, you know, come when we can see you again, Catalina, come up and we'll tell, tell you like a, a more fleshed out version of that story. Yeah. So. yeah you know, I, I think it's that sweet spot of your grandma can say it and a marketing company wouldn't get a headache over it. Like that's really where you want your name to fall somewhere in that line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's convenient because even though this wasn't the first um, goal of the name, it works because we're kind of calling upon the higher power of music to bring people together, and which is what the definition of invoke is as a verb. As a verb. <laughs> well, thanks, Alan, for being here. Yeah, thanks, guys. And yeah. uh, thanks again to KMFA. And we hope to see many of y'all tomorrow night at Invoke in Pieces. Until then, check y'all later. Thank you.